started with our show. Sydney, welcome to the show. Thanks so much for joining. Oh, thank you for having me. It's my pleasure. All right, well, days after Kamala Harris was named to the ticket, you actually tweeted something about it. You said, Kamala Harris was a dirty prosecutor. Stay tuned for details. All right, I'd like the details. Can you tell our viewers the truth about her record? Yes, it's absolutely horrible. I wrote about it several years ago, long before she was on the Democratic ticket, because when she was Attorney General of California, she was against criminal justice reform. She was defending a prosecutor who had actually falsified the transcript of a defendant's confession to make it worse than it was so he could threaten him with life in prison, as opposed to whatever the offense was that he'd actually committed. It's, it's been one thing or another that she's done like that. She even changed the law so she could put parents in jail for their children's truancy. That's, I mean, it's, yeah, we've heard, I know a lot of people have heard about that. It seems like she's sort of flip-flopped whenever it's convenient for her. She's one way one day, one way another. It seems like now she's just willing to do or say whatever the folks on the far left controlling the Democrat Party, the, the socialists, are telling her to do telling her to say she's totally phony, Sydney, and our campaign recently put out an ad specifically about that. I want everybody to watch this. Kamala Harris ran for president by rushing to the radical left, embracing Bernie's plan for socialized medicine, calling for trillions in new taxes, attacking Joe Biden for racist policies. Voters rejected Harris. They smartly spotted a phony, but not Joe Biden. He's not that smart. Biden calls himself a transition candidate. He is handing over the reins to Kamala while they jointly embrace the radical left. Slow Joe and phony Kamala, perfect together, wrong for America. All right, well, that's one of our new ads from the Trump campaign. Sydney, we know uh, Kamala Harris is the most liberal member of the Senate. I mean, this woman is even further left than Bernie Sanders, the self-proclaimed socialist, but now they're, of course, trying to portray her as some sort of a moderate. This is, this is the, the trickery of the Democrat Party. They're trying to pull the wool over the eyes of the American people. We can't forget about, of course, how she accused Joe Biden of being a racist on stage, but now she's so proud to be his running mate. Do you think the American people recognize that Kamala Harris is a total phony? I think they do. I can't imagine that they wouldn't. She's never stood for anything on her own. She's just an empty vessel that is filled with whatever political winds blow in that direction, and she wants to travel in that direction or promote herself. I, I don't think I've ever seen anyone with less integrity or principles of her own. It's, it's, it's there's nothing she could do to, to help America other than resign from the Senate and go about her own personal business. Well, and by the way, especially when we hear that apparently it's the Harris-Biden administration. So it sounds like uh, either the plan has always been all along for Joe Biden to win, and then they're going to do a switcheroo and put uh, Kamala Harris in as the president, or I, I don't know what the plan is. They both have told us it's the Harris-Biden administration. So I guess we should all uh, consider that as well when we go vote on November 3rd. But I want to talk about a book you published earlier this year, Conviction Machine, Standing Up to Federal Prosecutorial Abuse. But it's not just federal prosecutors. We see how awful these Soros-backed district attorneys have been in promoting his destructive agenda all across America. So, Sydney, why is it so important that we support President Trump and his call for law and order. Because no civilized society can exist without it. The rule of law is what sets us apart from every other country that's just run by mobs or oligarchs. We have to have that fair system of adjudicating disputes that everyone can rely on and laws that protect honest citizens to survive at all. It's crucial to the development of our country. We will lose everything if we don't retain that. We must reelect President Trump, and we must enforce all of the laws that protect our citizens from property damage, the, all the riots, all of that stuff needs to come to a screeching halt. 
So, Sydney, you uh, obviously are, are very close to uh, Michael Flynn, and you've been involved with this case for a long time. There are some new developments. Tell us what's going on. The government produced another tranche of exculpatory evidence this week, uh, just in the last couple of days, that shows even more text messages between Peter Strzok and Lisa Page over all their connivings and plannings and evidence of uh, communications between some of the analysts that work for the FBI, talking about how they knew there was nothing there, that General Flynn had done nothing wrong, but yet they were issuing national security letters, which are like subpoenas, but a judge doesn't have to approve them and nobody knows about them to get whatever of his personal information they wanted. And they did that as a pretext to keeping the quote investigation open, even though they knew there was no basis for an investigation in the first place. And then just last night, the government itself went ahead and filed as a supplement to its motion to dismiss a remarkable interview of one of the key agents on the Flynn case, explaining how all of it should never have happened. The investigation should never have been conducted and that it was a pretext and the plan for the special counsel was to get President Trump through the prosecution of General Flynn. It's absolutely stunning. You know, Sydney, I want to get your thoughts. Obviously, there's been so much talk about the Supreme Court uh, with the vacancy left by the death of Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Um, talk about this vacancy. Why is this so important that we make sure we have a ninth justice on the Supreme Court? This is a very, very big deal right now. It's absolutely imperative that President Trump fill the seat on the Supreme Court immediately, if not sooner, and that the Senate vote to confirm it immediately, if not sooner. There should be no Senate hearing on this candidate whatsoever. The Democrats have behaved so deplorably that they have lost any right to seek a hearing on this nominee or any other nominee, frankly. Senate hearings are not required. It's totally discretionary. There's no reason to do one in this case. We'll have been vetted through a Senate hearing before and is extremely capable and it needs to be confirmed. The, the seat needs to be filled immediately. They can just take it to a vote on the floor and confirm the judge. Yeah, and I, I wanna give you a chance to address all of our viewers. Um, you know, we are under the 40 day mark now, headed towards election day. Everything is ramping up. We know there is so much that has happened this year in particular, but when it comes to Joe Biden, when it comes to his ability to, you know, maintain law and order, to keep America safe and secure, these are very important things. I, what you said right there was very important. It, it's the only way we have a country. If you don't have law and order, if you don't have safety and security, nothing else, Sydney, really matters, right? Do you think that Joe Biden could do the job needed to maintain law and order, to keep America safe and secure. What do you want to tell our viewers as we head towards Election Day if for some reason somebody has not yet made up their mind? Well, President Trump and the American people in the last four years in particular have experienced virtually every unimaginable kind of fraud that could be perpetrated on them by the Democratic Party. But I think the candidacy, candidacy of Joe Biden is yet the very worst because he is obviously not capable of even taking care of himself. The plan all along has been to put Harris in as president. They can do it within the first week should he happen to be elected because they can use the 25th Amendment and any doctor, any sane, reasonable doctor would declare him incompetent to take care of the office of the president of the United States. So then she would be installed as president and could pick her own vice president. It would be an absolute travesty, and it, it's just a huge fraud that's being perpetrated on the American public by the Democratic Party. It's, it should be criminal. It's so bad. Yeah, I mean, absolutely frightening to, to consider that, that that could become a reality. And maybe, Sydney, they've already tipped us off to it with, like I said a minute ago, the Harris-Biden administration. Sydney Powell, thank you so much for being with us. Uh, we really appreciate it, and we hope you'll come back soon. Thank you. I'm happy to do it anytime. All right, we're going to take one.